Hi folks, I'm Maddie. I'm the Vice President Equity and Campaigns for CSER. Uh, I use she, her pronouns, and it's really uh, great to, uh, to see you folks. Thanks so much for coming. So I'll just start us off with a land acknowledgement. Um, this is something that um, we do at the beginning of our meetings um, to pay respect to the land um, and to the First Nations peoples of this land. Toronto and Ryerson University are in the Dish with One Spoon territory. The Dish with One Spoon is a treaty between the Anishinaabe, the Mississaugas, and the Haudenosaunee that bound them to share the territory and protect the land. Subsequent Indigenous nations, your peoples, Europeans, and all newcomers have been invited into this treaty in the spirit of peace, friendship, and respect. Um, and if you're not in Toronto um, right now, I would recommend you look up uh, the land that you're on, and you can do that using www.native-land.ca. And that's a cool free online tool to learn about the land that you're on, which is important uh, to be respectful uh, and honor kind of our relationships uh, for those of us who are settlers here. Um, so again, thank you so much for coming. I'm gonna share my screen uh, and uh, let you know a little bit about CSER which is uh, the Students' Union uh, for part-time students. Okay, so welcome to CSER 101. We are your Students' Union. Uh, if you are enrolled in a Cheng School class, that means that uh, we represent you. Uh, a brief history of CSER. So we were created in 1979 um, by part-time and evening students at Ryerson and Caesar joined the Canadian Federation of Students, which is like the national version of the Student Union Coalition in fall uh, 2006. 94% of Caesar members voted in favor of joining. So it was a super high turnout um, and students were really excited to join uh, the Canadian Fe Federation of Students. Uh, and, and that referendum had a 300% voter turnout compared to previous referendums and we became local 105 of the Canadian Federation of Students. Um, and the Canadian Federation of Students represents more than 350,000 student members. Um, and the Canadian Federation of Students Ontario is the voice of post-secondary uh, education in the province and across the country. So speaking for students in a united voice across Ontario uh, and across the country. Uh, they offer campaign materials. So those cool buttons and stickers that you see when we do orientation, um, they, fed, they offer federal and provincial lobbying power. So working together to, pre to present united demands to the federal and provincial government on behalf of students. Um, things like re reducing tuition fees and income supports for students during COVID. Um, and some of those important wins have included um, proving that the SCI, which stands for the Student Choice Initiative, which was a piece of legislation that Doug Ford's uh, provincial government brought in, uh, cutting money out from student unions on campuses. Um, the Students United to prove that the Student Choice Initiative was unlawful in court, which is a huge victory. Um, and also winning the Ontario Student Grant for students uh, as well as all the income supports that you've seen through COVID um, were really won by students working together. So what does a student's union uh, mean to you? So that's uh, a question for students, definitely. Um, uh, student unions are what our members ask us to be. Um, we listen to you. If there's a campaign or a service that you're interested in, um, then we are here to respond to uh, the things that you're interested in seeing from us. So we really are membership driven um, and we respond to the things that we're hearing from students. So the three pillars of CSER, advocacy, CSER lobbies the university and the government um, to support the needs of our members, to defend public accessible education um, so continuing to advocate for education as a right um, and human rights at a local and international level. So getting involved in our local um, issues, including human rights campaigns that uh, affect our, our students and that our students uh, have been speaking out about and care about. So we also provide services um, to meet members' needs and save our members' money. 
So that's things like our bursary, um, our health and dental plan, um, and uh, all the services that CSER offers. Uh, and we also offer events. Um, we build community. Um, we offer ways to get, in, get to know each other, relax, unwind, have fun, um, and attend those kind of inclusive events to learn more uh, from workshops as well at Ryerson. So see, here are some of our services. We have an academic advocacy coordinator. So this is somebody who um, can advocate on your behalf uh, for the appeals if you um, are facing any kind of um, disciplinary measure through the university. Um, this person comes with you to your appeals and they um, act as kind of a student advocate on your behalf. Um, there's one for full-time students and then there's one for Chang School students. So that's the uh, advisor that you would access through CSER. Um, we also offer legal services. So that's our tax clinic that we usually offer um, to students to come get your taxes done. Um, uh, and then we also offer, um, uh, a, we have a lawyer who you can meet with um, to ask kind of legal questions around tenants issues or um, OSAP and other kind of legal uh, aid questions. We have a member's services office, um, which is kind of the first point of contact for students, uh, uh, for you to have somebody to talk to about the services um, that we offer. We offer discounts and tickets. Um, uh, so when things are usually more opened up, we have those kinds of opportunities available. Um, we have a health and dental plan for part-time students um, to save you money on your health and dental bills. Um, we have computer access and printing. Again, this is part of our non-COVID uh, services, but those are definitely available for you. And please be aware um, for our non-COVID non time, the uh, computer access and printing services. Um, and we are still running our bursary and emergency grants. So financial aid is available um, through CSER uh, by applying for our bursary um, and emergency grants at any time. Uh, emergency grants are open at any time and the bursary deadline is on our website. Uh, and the tax clinic, uh, which I'd mentioned, uh, is available to our members as well. Um, so for our uh, advocacy, we have the Campaigns and Equity Committee, which is one of CSER's open committees. It's open to all Ryerson students. Um, and if you come to attend, then you'll be working with uh, myself um, and the staff at CSER in brainstorming and planning on campaigns um, running to make Ryerson a more equitable and better place. Um, so this is an open space for issues on campus and ideas for new campaigns and actions. So wanting to hear from you um, about the campaigns we're running at CSER, um, your input, what we can be doing better and what the university can be doing better as well. Uh, and if you wanna get involved in this campaign, email me at any time, I'm vp.equity at mycesar.ca. Um, some of our campaigns, uh, I'll just go over quickly. So this is, uh, we have, we run equity-based campaigns and the one here is the Remove the Statue campaign. Um, so if you don't know, Egerton Ryerson, who the university is named after, is one of the people who was the architect of the residential school system um, that was very violent um, and traumatized um, a lot of Indigenous children, uh, thousands of them across Canada. So um, this campaign is really calling to remove the statue. It's long past time. Uh, and these are conversations that Indigenous students, um, this is something they've been advocating for and talking about at Ryerson for a number of years. So um, supporting really their efforts to remove the statue because it's long past time to do that. Um, and if you wanna sign a petition, uh, calling on the university to remove the statue. Um, I will leave the link in the Zoom chat um, and you would be welcome to sign it because we did start one um, and I will leave it there. So that's one of the campaigns. Then there's also the Cops Off Campus initiatives. Um, so this is focusing on 
um, making sure that our campuses are safe, um, including from um, discrimination by police officers, which we know is something that students and specifically marginalized and racialized students, black students face um, so often on our campuses is over policing um, and over uh, scrutiny. So um, the Cops Off Campus Initiative advocates for alternatives to policing on campus. Um, and we also run campaigns supporting uh, local crisis such as 1492 Land Back Lane. Um, so we uh, provided a donation to that campaign um, and have been kind of uh, pointing students to ways that they can get involved and, and rallies that you can come out to in ways to show support. Um, so that is also one of the ways we're supporting um, kind of local uh, efforts against uh, colonialism. Um, and we also run a lot of events. So uh, the events committee plans those events. It's one of our open committees. It's a lot of fun. Um, we plan monthly events and workshops and uh, we help promote them. So it's an open space for new event ideas as well. Um, so there's lots of opportunities for online events um, and lots of spaces to help volunteer or get involved or help host them um, and get involved in some way. So if you uh, are interested in attending this committee meeting, it's so much fun. So please email me uh, again, vp.equity at mycaesar.ca. Um, and we'd love to find uh, ways to get you involved in some of our events or to hear your ideas. So yeah, what type of events would you like to see? Uh, let us know in the chat. Uh, it could be networking events, could be workshops where you learn things, um, could be about a specific issue, or it could be just a social. We've been trying to run some of those too. Um, so some of our volunteer roles are outreach. Um, that's for non-COVID times. Usually you'd see a nice desk like this outside the student center um, and there'd be opportunities to talk to students and get to know uh, each other that way and let, let folks know about Caesar. Um, uh, we'll see kind of what happens with COVID, but for right now that's kind of on pause. Uh, there's class talks. Um, another thing we usually do <laughs> during not COVID times um postering another thing that usually happens um, when we're in person and that we don't do online um, there's data entry um, photography videography um, and those are all things that uh, once we are back in person if you are into these things please come volunteer for these roles because they're a lot of fun usually um, and we still have social media opportunities uh, in terms of sharing uh, uh, and letting people know that uh, Caesar is here to represent you. Um, and the committees are still meeting online. Um, so we very much welcome you at all of them um, uh, to come out and hear your ideas. And the class representative program has been working online too. Um, so if you're interested in that, please reach out as well because that's another fun opportunity to volunteer is to be kind of an ambassador to your class um, and to give them updates on uh, what Caesar is doing and campaigns and services that they can get involved in. Um, so that's a, a fun way to earn volunteer hours too. Um, so this is uh, kind of what that is. Uh, again, you're representing yourself or you're representing Caesar to your course. Um, so passing on email announcements that you get from Caesar and being a kind of a friendly face in the classroom. Um, and you can also represent your course to Caesar. So passing on to us the suggestions or the challenges, the conversations, questions, uh, or concerns people in your course have to the Caesar board. Uh, and what would you like to see from Caesar? Is that a really important question um, for you? Um, so please feel free to answer in the chat. And thank you again so much for coming. So I'll just stop to uh, kind of look at the chat. Okay, so there's some links here. Thanks folks. So we have some uh, events coming up for the rest of Frost uh, week. 
uh, including our game night on Wednesday and our drag bingo on Thursday. So please feel free to sign up for those. Those are gonna be some like fun social events. Um, so I'm just reading someone's question. Okay, so yes, I see is a question about um, opting out um, of health and dental plan. Um, so you should be getting an answer um, shortly. Um, they just may not have had a chance to um, get back to you yet, but you should be getting an answer about that. Um, thank you for asking though. Um, so we have a little bit more time um, if anybody has any other questions, do you have to be, a, uh, I'm gonna guess you're asking like, do you have to be in drag? You don't have to be in drag. You can come looking glamorous. You can come um, in your PJs, it's all cool. Um, and we will have fun with a, a cool drag queen. Um, I think it's gonna be a meeting. So video can be on. Um, if you want it to be. Um, and I want to ask about bursaries or grants. Okay. Um, so our uh, bursary is on our website. I will just find the link for that. Um, and you are welcome to apply for the emergency grant at any time. And yeah, we, we do have a kind of like a online learning um, presentation as well. So I can also go into that if we don't have any more questions. Thank you to Aya who's helping with the links. Um, how can I get involved in campaigns and equity committee? Okay, awesome. Thank you, Annie. Um, if you don't mind sending me an email just so that I have yours and I can add you to the Google meeting, um, just email me. I'm vp.equity at mycaesar.ca. I'm typing it. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Um, and it would be great to see you there. Um, okay, yeah, so the Chang School Bursary is closed, um, but you are welcome to apply for the emergency grant um, that I had posted in the chat. Um, so I think I'm just gonna share the- Maddie, yes. sorry, just, uh, just uh, wanted to, Give some help just with the bursary question, just because we did get an update today, uh, just from the Chang School. So uh, the the Chang School bursary um, is separate from the Caesar bursary. So the Caesar offers a bursary, and the deadline for that is February fifth uh, at five p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so that can be found on our website, uh, and there's quick links to to get to that. And then there's the emergency burst uh, grant that folks also uh, mentioned that can be accessed at any time. So there is also the Chang School University, uh, the, through the university, uh, a grant that's offered. Um, uh, and you apply for that through Award Spring, uh, which is Ryerson University's uh, portal. It can sometimes be difficult uh, for continuing education students um, because it's, it's built for undergrads, but it's something that we're trying to address. But the deadline for that shouldn't be over. Uh, we actually found out today that the Chang School uh, has had that as a rolling deadline. So it might have met one of the deadlines, but there should still be additional deadlines uh, going through the semester. So they might just be doing the first wave of the applications and then considering your application uh, um, at a later date uh, because you might just get stuck in like the second quarter or however they're doing it. So if you are getting a hard no that the, that the application uh, isn't open, uh, please uh, contact uh, Maddie uh, or any of the executive uh, or staff at CSER and, and we'll definitely follow up with the Chinese group to clarify that. But they did say that it is open uh, for about three months uh, for the Chinese school bursary and that's a very new thing this year. Uh, and I'm seeing a question just about the bursary page and I have got it, sorry for interrupting. Okay, thank you. Um, there's also a question about the data entry role, um, if you want to answer that, but it's also like this is a, a role for um, non-COVID times, unfortunately, but we do have volunteer uh, roles that are uh, still happening. Um, and what's covered for the health and dental plan. Corey, do you mind answering this? 
Yeah, absolutely. So the health and dental plan, uh, so that's only available to students who are enrolled in part-time undergraduate programs. So if you're in a certificate program uh, or just taking uh, like a, a, a Chang school course, uh, you aren't eligible for the Caesar Health and Dental Plan just because the way that the plans work is on 12, mi 12 month cycles. And uh, we just have found in the past that it was really confusing for uh, continuing education students um, just because we take courses at, at a bit of different uh, intervals. But if you are in a part-time degree program, you are eligible for that. Uh, there should be some information that your program administrator sent out. If they haven't, get in contact with us. We usually don't uh, provide the specific coverage uh, via uh, verbal, just because everything is so finely worded. Uh, but you can always contact our office uh, if you have clarifications. And then our health and dental experts uh, in the office can answer those specific questions. Uh, but there is a, a wide range of coverage that is supplemental to coverage you might already have, or can also be used as the primary care plan. Okay. So those are kind of uh, some of the services that Caesar offers. I'm just going to go through some of our uh, tips for online learning um, that our mature students working group put together. Um, so uh, as a, a continuing education student, you might also be a mature student. Um, I'm a mature student as well. Um, so uh, uh, one of the things we do as a student's union is work to support um, mature students. Um, so we do have a mature students working group who put together uh, this cool presentation to help all of us with our uh, new online uh, learning uh, world that we are in um, that some of us are better at than others. So um, please continue to ask questions um, if you have any in the chat, but I'm just going to go through this because it's uh, it's helpful. So this is by the Caesar Mature Students Planning Group, which you are welcome to join. Um, so we'll go over kind of Zoom 101, um, basic tools, functions, etiquette, and help. Um, so before you join your Zoom call, check your location. Um, so, you know, are, do you are you in a spot where there's a lot going on in the background? So maybe you want to keep your camera off. Um, are you in a spot where there's a lot going on in the background? So maybe you want to use a virtual background. Um, make sure you have a space that uh, is going to be um, somewhere you can use uh, to do your class for a few hours. Um, try to check out your connection before you start. Um, sometimes this happens to me where I log into a call and then I realize my connection is not good after I've already joined. So try to get that, um, uh, try to check that and do what you can for it before the class starts. Um, and your access. So make sure you have the link um, and uh, you have that ready to go if you do have a synchronous class. Um, so one that you're going to at a set time um, during uh, the week. Um, so again, for your location, you're gonna want a quiet and comfortable space if you have one. I know that's the ideal circumstance um, and we don't all have that. Um, but enough light to see what you're doing um, so you're not straining your eyes if possible. Um, just remember to try to keep uh, a light um, so that you're not uh, looking into a dark computer for too many hours of uh, your day. Um, and the least noise or interruptions possible so that you can focus. Um, so closing the door um, if you need to do that um, or trying to find a space that will allow you to focus. And uh, one tip is to face the door. Um, if you have kids or animals or any chance of kind of people running into the background of your screen um, and you want to avoid that, then just face the door and you'll be able to see people coming. Um, so you, when you're logging into your Zoom class, um, some meetings uh, require you to sign in using Ryerson credentials. So that's just a form of security. And if you're doing that, then you can use the single sign on feature uh, or called SSO and that's available to all Ryerson students. So you're gonna click on that little box over here. Um, and then uh, you're gonna click sign in with SSO. 
um, and then you're going to sign in with your um, Ryerson username, kind of the way you would through uh, my, my Ryerson.ca. Um, then you're going to open zoom.us and all of this basically allows you to log into your Zoom class without going in through your personal account, um, your personal email and just using kind of the Ryerson uh, account. So um, you can also download Zoom on your laptop or your phone for backup. Um, if you don't want to download it, you can also just use it on your computer. Um, and it's good to become familiar with Zoom's features um, on your computer and on your phone because they move around a little bit. And if you're gonna be using your phone at all um, uh, to access the Zoom, then it's useful to know kind of where things are different and where they are. Um, so things like uh, mute, where is mute? And am I on mute when I'm on my phone? That kind of thing is important to notice. Um, and also practice using the icons at the top and bottom of your screen so that uh, you get a good uh, feel for it. So um, mute and start video are the two most used. So that allows you to talk and to uh, be seen. Um, and the chat is where you'll be participating and share screen is where you show your work. Um, and the Chang bot is uh, also there. If you have a technical question, um, so also things like how do I access Ryerson Wi-Fi outside of campus? That's a good question. That's one of the questions that's being asked here. So um, the Chang bot is on the um, uh, Chang School's website and it can answer those kinds of technical questions. It's just like tech support, but through a little uh, chat box. Um, so for success in online learning, um, the things that you're gonna need are yourself, which you already come prepared with, uh, uh, your in-class learning and your outside of the classroom uh, situations. Um, so know your own learning style. Are you a visual person? Are you an auditory person? Are you more of a hands-on person? Um, so just know that about yourself and be aware that this way that we're learning right now online works for some people better than others. And it's okay to have the learning style that you have um, and as much as possible, um, trying to learn in the way that uh, works best for you. Advocate for your needs um, and your rights as a student. So uh, use the university's resources. Um, those are there for you. Um, so ac accommodations such as accessibility accommodations if you have a disability or you uh, need any kind of accommodation support through your class, um, you're entitled to that. So um, uh, seek, uh, seek accommodations if you need it using the library um, and other kind of university resources. Um, consider your time management. So consider your unique situation, work, children, or other courses, and try to find a schedule that'll work for you. Inside the classroom, um, participate. So asking questions will help you learn and will help others learn. I know that can seem hard in our online environment, but um, making sure that you're still asking questions if you need to, so that you can get as much as possible out of your course. Um, and embrace group work. So even though it's uh, sometimes difficult online, um, uh, this is uh, how the work environment functions too. You'll often be working in teams um, and sometimes it's a really good learning opportunity and it's a way to meet new people and make friends in your, uh, in your class. So embrace group work as the opportunity that it is um, and ask for accommodations again, if needed. So that's really important. Um, and for outside of the classroom, have a plan B for your technical needs. So um, if you know that your internet is not going to work um, on a certain day, or, um, or it goes out last minute, something like that, have a plan B in mind um, for how you're going to approach your professor, um, how you're going to ask for support and accommodations um, and try to make those kind of um, advanced preparations if you can for things that might go wrong um, technically. And also set time for reading, studying and homework. So try to schedule that in as well and enlist support from everyone in your life. So 
um, making sure that folks around you are aware that you're studying online and it's a new situation um, and that you're going to um, need support from folks uh, to be doing this work. Um, so kind of getting folks in your life um, onto the same page as you um, and knowing uh, what you're working on. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to uh, ask them now, but that's our uh, success in online learning presentation made by the Caesar Mature Students Working Group. Um, so thank you. Okay, awesome. So um, thank you, Ayat, for posting more information about um, our Zoom workshop. Um, and yeah, if there are no more questions, um, we can probably wrap up, but I'll give folks another second if you um, can think of anything. Although also you can email me if you have a question that you think of later. So that's everything I think for us um, tonight. Thank you so much for coming. Um, and uh, yeah, um, please come out to the rest of our Frost Week events um, and sign the uh, petition. I posted it in the comments. Um, and you are welcome um, to sign it. It is, again, to remove the Egerton Ryerson statue, which is a, a priority for uh, folks at Ryerson to um, be speaking up about. Um, and yeah, again, our drag bingo night on Thursday and our game night uh, on Wednesday. Um, so we hope to see you there. And we're also, uh, yeah, there are prizes to be run won. Thanks for reminding us, Ayat. Um, some cool gift cards. And we also have a lot of cool events happening for the rest of the winter term. So follow us on our social media. Um, we're uh, at my Caesar. Again, Caesar is C-E-S-A-R. Um, and we're active on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. So um, you'll see all of our events and deadlines for things like bursaries um, and those kinds of services on our social media. So um, thank you so much for coming out uh, this evening and good luck with your classes. And uh, we are here for you um, through email if you need us. Um, and uh, yeah, good luck with your classes. <laughs>